Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday night. Welcome in to your favorite show for Bama content, the Bama Standard. Before we do anything, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you're in the live chat, let's get it rowdy tonight. Let us know what you think if you're watching the replay. Get in the comment section. Leave your thoughts. As always, we're brought to you by Workspace Solutions. I'm your host, Justin Riley. With me is a living legend. And when Ric Flair said to be the man, woo, you got to beat the man. 1999 all SEC linebacker, the Marvin Constant. Two-time national champion. One of the best dudes to ever tote that rock. He had men questioning their life decisions. USFL champion, Bo Scarborough. Stephen M. Smith is not here tonight, but we've got a replacement. Chris James, one of the baddest dudes to ever play in that secondary. And the host of the final whistle. What's going on, fellas? What's up? What's up? What's, What's up, up, fellas? What up? Not much. And we got a special guest tonight, one of the most electrifying men to ever grace the football field. We used to talk about Deuce Palmer, but then this man came along, got him an SB. Matter of fact, they had to create insurance policies for ankles because this man was breaking all of them. The <laughs> living legend, Tyrone Prothrow. Brother, good to have you back on. Thanks, thanks for having me. I, I think you need to do my introduction like The Rock, how he uh how he comes in and he was uh when he was wrestling, how he I want you to be that enthusiastic about it when you uh introduce me. <laughs> so you want me you want me to drop a finally you gotta be the most entertaining <laughs> I, I want you to be exactly like he like he is when he into when he introduced himself <laughs> no nah, i'm just playing yeah thanks for having nah, me i'll definitely work on that <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't have that accent quite down yet still i'm battling the, the mississippi and me <laughs> <laughs> trying to be the professional analyst <laughs> i got you so it's a constant battle. Fellas, what's going on? How's your week been? Another week in the books, almost. It ain't it ain't started quite yet. Mm -hmm. Hey, I Let's take get, every, every day I put an X so I'm gonna count them all. <laughs> man, my, my OTA started for my high school team, so we, we gotta get in it, man. Yeah, same here, man. We in uh we in the weight room, uh trying to get these kids strong, man, stronger and faster. Yep. Chris, before I told you about our guest yesterday, man, you shared an interesting story about how you almost decided to stop playing DB because of this man right here. <laughs> you want to disclose that story before we kind of get things rolling? Yeah, man. We we were in a uh, bowl prep before we played Minnesota up in the New City Bowl, and we had just installed that turf, the turf field right outside the weight room. And um, – they ran, they happened to run a jet sweep. Like one of the first times they, you know, they tried to get a little innovative. They ran a jet sweep to Pro Throw. Pro came across. I came down here, had to make a life decision. Pro gave me that, uh uh. Man, <laughs> my knee, my back, my ankle. I had to make a life decision, man. I just fell down and said, man, you know what, man? That's it, man. That, he, he's pound for pound the best football player I ever played with, man. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not saying it just because he's here, man, but Pro was, was the coldest. Was the coldest football player pound for pound I ever played with, man. And it was, it, was a, it was an honor to be on that field with you, man. Oh yeah, that's around that time they started doing uh they started doing the, the jet sweep, the speech yep. speech from under center. And uh I remember we put in um we put in the uh, Wildcat. Um and then we actually didn't use it until the the Iron Bowl. And mm -hmm. the very first snap that we that we did it, uh, JB Clark snapped, snapped it 15 yards over my head. <laughs> uh, and of course, we, we never we never did it again after that. So, uh, and then the next year, Arkansas started the Wildcat, uh, and, and how it, it all got going uh, with Arkansas with the Wildcat is when they started that. But you know, we started to do a little bit of that, and 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 that was kind of my niche, man. I know, you know, the, the speed sweeps and. And all that stuff that was kind of my thing. It was cold, man. Cold. You hurt my ankle, man. My back still hurt today, man. I still feel it. It wasn't. It wasn't difficult to hurt your ankles, man. <laughs> skinny. He said, he, had, he said pipe cleaners for ankles. Skinny man. 
She got in that foxhole with Coach TJ, Chris. Huh? She have been in that foxhole with Coach TJ. Man, TJ had him doing that stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. Mom, remember that? That six yeah. a.m. Yeah. stupid stuff. <laughs> I, I ain't want no part of it. Yeah. He was on it, man. He ain't play about it. Yeah, I never had to attend those sessions. <laughs> I, I still far away, stay far away from TJ as possible, man, when it came to that. No, that's right. <laughs> well, before we get started on the matters at hand, we got to go ahead and hit the death chart. I know that you aren't quite Stephen M. Smith, Chris James, and nor do your glasses have the thickness of his lens, but, you know, we can all dream, right? We're going to let you go ahead and do that because we have an exciting announcement over the weekend that Thai fans need to know more about. Yeah, man. Um, we just got a commitment a few days ago from a six foot four, 295 pound interior lineman, Joseph Ayanata from Calvary Christian in Clearwater, Florida. Um, What's so interesting about him is he was Mario Cristobal's top center target. He he he's only ranked a three star, but he's somebody that's going to blow up in the rankings pretty soon. Um, Georgia had just started heavy communication with him prior to his visit to Bama. He came on his visit on an unofficial the day before camp with his family, and he fell in love with it, man. And um, he's he's nasty. He's um, like I said, he's already six four two ninety five, so he's um, he's still growing. And he you just put on that film, man. He's a dog. He's a dog in those trenches, man. He's he's nasty. He plays with a mean streak. Um, plays with, with good, great pad level. Uh, right now they have him. Um, he's playing like tackle for his high school team, but he's gonna, like I say, slide inside. Um, he came down to Alabama, Miami, Florida, um, UCF, and South Carolina. Those were his main um schools that he, he was looking at. And like I said, um, Georgia had just recently caught on to him, and he came to Bama and um and our um, O-line coach, man, fell in love with him, fell in love with him, and it, it was vice versa, and the rest was history. And what's so intriguing about him, he understands the, the big picture. His dad played for Florida State, Joey Ayanada, back in the 80s under Bobby Bowden. So he played – he's well coached, man. He's well versed on – um, you don't, you know, pass up a chance to play for a legend like that, man, like a, for a legend. His dad, you know, drilled that home to him. Um on that because he played with Bobby Bowden and he's um he he's 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 gonna be somebody that I expect to come in early and uh have a chance to compete um early at that center position man because he he's gonna fit right in with those big nasties that we just uh recruited and um and and uh Elias Alien and uh, Miles McVay so he he's gonna be a, a, a very big piece and um Quez um what, what is McAdary? 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 Marquez McEldery? McEldery. McEldery. And um, yeah, man, um, he's he's gonna be somebody like I said that's gonna that's gonna probably play early, man. He's like a three star. That that ranking doesn't do him any justice, and that's why you know kind of people are just shrugging it off. But it was a huge win for um for 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 Bama uh, on that front, man. And he's gonna be a riser um as he continue continues to go to camp and um you know he better be. Cause I'm gonna hold you to that. Yeah, he's. I, hey man, just put on that tape, Marvin. Just put on that tape, man. He 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 he'll be somebody bow a little to run behind, man. So you're saying he could shut down Marvin if they were to go head to head? Nah, man, I ain't gonna tell that lie. <laughs> man, <laughs> I ain't gonna, no, tell I ain't gonna bring you back <laughs> on if you're not going to. Hey man, hey, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. When I got to Kevin, Marvin was Debo, man. When I got to Kevin, man, Mar <laughs> Marvin was Debo, man. I just shut up. Ray Hunts was talking all that noise. And, and I said, boy, and I, I just shut up, man. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Who do you, do you have as a comp uh, for Ayanada? He Right now, I would say um, pretty much Ryan Kelly. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, he's somebody that can grow into that type of center, man. Because, you know, Ryan, Ryan was pretty nasty. He was undersized, but he was nasty. And then until he grew into his body, man, and, um, that, that's, that's the type of comp. You know, Ryan, was, of course, was more – Highly touted coming out as a recruit, but he reminds me of Ryan Kelly. He has that type of um, upside. Um, I think because I think Brian Green kind of jumped into your your uh, assessment late. Uh, does he need to put on muscle? Just curious. How is he? How is it? That he's that talented, but just a three star. 
That's a good question, man. I sometimes the 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 industry just just gets it wrong, man. You know what I'm saying? Like um some guys, you, you, I mean, everybody can't be a four or five star. You know what I'm saying? It's only it's a lot of good football players around the country, and everybody can't. It's only what 300, 350, four stars in the entire country, and there's a lot of good football players out there, man, especially in Florida. Yeah. But um, like I say, uh, like I said, his his upside is at center, and that's where he's gonna play. But like now he plays on the edge of high school, so I guess because he's not six seven, six six, you know, like um most of those highly ranked tackles, um. That's probably why you know he has that he has that rating. But what I do, man, I don't I don't really look at the stars. I just look at the offer list, and, um, and that that tells you a lot about a, about a guy by by his offers. Because I know Georgia was about to pull the trigger on him, and um, like I said, uh, Alabama, Miami, Florida, Central Florida, South Carolina, Georgia Tech, Ole Miss. I mean, his his offer list speaks for itself. So um, he's he's somebody that's going to surprise me. I, that's good enough for me. I'll take it, man. We told you. I'll, I'll add to that, man. Uh, uh, there's a, you know, I was a three star coming out, mm-hmm. and I didn't have a lot of offers uh, coming out, and and partially uh, my issue was because I, you know, a lot of them didn't know if I was going to get qualified or not because I didn't qualify to the last time, the last second that I had to qualify. But you know, I think a lot of the things with the three stars is really how, you know, how much recognition. And how much um, you know people see you, um, and and I don't think you know me coming from you know 4A Cleveland County, um, you know just the recognition we were winning games, but I think the recognition and how much people saw me uh, is kind of where um, my three star came in. Uh, but I don't think you can really judge the uh, kids off of stars because there's a lot of kids that you know that right. come in that are three stars and man they can they can flat out ball like I said you can turn on like Chris said you can turn on the tape and you can watch them and, and you can just see they got that doll they can play and it's just something that you know you, you enjoy watching when you see them so I don't think the stars uh, has anything to do with it I completely I agree with that. Well, yeah, it's a lot of fives that play like zeros. And to get that offer and count and, and to get that that green light to commit like that, rather, you know, perform in front of the staff. You know, that says a lot, man. And um, especially like our, our O-line coach now, Wolford, he, he likes those those big uglies. It was said that um, he recently walked into a some um big time prospects high school and they asked him why they wasn't recruiting him um alignment alignment because he wasn't big enough he was high, highly touted but he, he didn't weigh enough he wasn't big enough and they didn't feel like he didn't feel like he could you know grow to where he wanted to be so he wants he wants those huge like Notre Dame like type O lines um up front and those big ugly man that can move they can be in and move so that's what he's gonna grow into all right so again, we will hold you to that. So if Marvin Every places any word bets, of. <laughs> <laughs> remember Marvin's a betting man. If he loses money on anything, you will be held responsible, sir. Right. <laughs> so let's move into our first topic. Of course, one of the most important things to Tide fans right now is the whole quarterback situation. They're in a panic. They're in an uproar. Somehow Alabama came out of spring with a muddier quarterback pitcher than when it began with. And to the outside world, we look pretty desperate. After all, we're ranked 123rd in the nation in returning offensive production. And then we bring in Tyler Buckner. And usually when that happens, it's an indicator that neither of your current guys are the guy. So they went out and got the guy. Well, that's not the the case here for Alabama. And what's really cool is neither Milro nor Simpson transferred. They weren't threatened by it. So now you got – Three guys who are convinced that they can win the job. But here's the thing. You're not going to be splitting first-team reps with three guys too long into the fall. So my question to start things off, guys, how long does that last? And when they kind of make the decision, do they necessarily need to decide on just one guy? Could we possibly see two guys? Pro, I'll let you start things off since uh, you're our guest and one of the finest offensive minds in the, in the game. I don't know about that. Go ahead, sir. Well, <laughs> now, uh, that's that's me being enthusiastic, like you were asking for. Uh, I got, I got. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I think, uh, I think um, you you may possibly see a, a two quarterback system, and you may see uh, 
Milro, uh, who looks the way he does, you know, just being him being the athlete that he is, you may see him uh, and, you know, him have his own package of, you know, maybe doing some things that maybe the other quarterback can't, you know, can't do. Um, and then, you know, with, with Simpson and Buckner, I mean, I, I just feel like it's, it's, it's really uh, one of the two, uh, whichever one pans out to be, um, you know, to win the starting job. Uh, but I think Milro uh, will probably have, you know, probably have his, his own package to where he can go out and do, do the things that, you know, that the other, other quarterbacks can't do. Um, but I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's time to, uh, to panic. I know when, when people say when you have, you know, multiple quarterbacks, you know, it's, it's a problem, but uh, it's not always a, a bad problem to have multiple quarterbacks. Um, but like I said, I'm excited to see what uh you know what they have for you know all three quarterbacks and to see which one uh, wins the job. No doubt, Bo. I'll pass it to you next, man. Uh, how do you feel about this? And is this something that drags out very long, or did we come away with a, an answer pretty early? And can we see more than one guy? Uh, I think they'll make the decision between week one and week two, mm -hmm. and um. Yeah, I can. Um, we can expect to see more than one guy, uh, especially with the kind of talent that we have in the backfield with the quarterback situation. And um, yeah, uh, I expect to see a package from Jalen Miro, like Proto said. Uh, but I don't. I don't expect him to start. Um, I don't. I don't see him starting, but I do see him rotating if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. All right, Martin, from the defensive side of things, what do you think? You're, you're the quarterback of the defense, right? Pretty much. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think – I don't know who we're going to see to start the season off. You know, again, you have three different quarterbacks who bring three different skill sets to the table, one having a relationship with the current offensive coordinator, Tommy Reese. The other two, you know, they were at Alabama last year, both, you know – highly touted when they came into Alabama. So, you know, considered to be all world quarterbacks. So, you know, you factor in the fact that you have three of them in the same room and there's only one ball. It's hard to say what's going to happen, but I think you'll see each of them receive ample playing time to start the season off. And then kind of based upon their numbers and productivity, you'll start to see them, you know, some separation. All right, Chris, do you have a different perspective or do you kind of follow the same path here? These guys are taking. What you got? I, I, I'm taking the same path. I think that um, it, if it's close in fall camp, I wouldn't be surprised to see game one, all three of them, you know, get some reps. Um, right. To kind of to, to kind of see it, uh, how, how it goes if it's if it's close. But a fall camp would tell a lot, man. If it's if it's two guys that are out front, it'll be two guys, depending on however many. I don't. I really don't expect either of them to really separate during fall camp. Um, because I think all of them are talented, so I don't think. Any of them will blow, you know, blow it out, blow it away to where somebody will grab the reins if they haven't, you know, what I'm saying pretty much by now. Usually that takes place early in the season. So I, I, I expect to um it to boil down to whoever takes care of the ball, whoever gets them in the right checks, whoever um just just the team rallies behind. But like Pro said, I, I think it'll be a package for Miller regardless. He's just too dynamic to keep on the sideline, you know, the whole game. So they'll find ways to if if Simpson or Buckner were, were to take it, take the job, I still think that Miro will play. Um, so that that's pretty much where I where I stand on that. You know, I think we're too focused on who's going to be the guy. To be honest with you, if you look at the type of offense I feel like Coach Saban is trying to instill now, we can win win with any three of these guys. Uh, we all know what what style of offense Nick wants to run, and he's got the pieces. But here's what fans are not understanding, and they somehow have forgotten after a short period of time. It's not going to resemble the teams of 2018, 2019, 2020. You know, joyless murder ball. The thing is, folks, you got to realize it doesn't have to resemble that. What got us to championships before that? Uh, a powerful offensive line, nasty running backs, and we've got five elite level running backs right now. So, we don't have to lie at the scoreboard. Chris, I'll let you kind of take the take the baton now to talk about this, and then we'll go into Marvin and go around the room. And before I do that, though, introducing the undisputed 
<laughs> king of comedy and the star of the show, Steve Brown. Thank you. I cannot believe that you guys are doing this show without me. I, you you should have <laughs> waited. You should have waited. And, <laughs> and, you know, of course, you know, you got the, you got Marvin still here. I don't even know why he's still a part of the show when you got these great <laughs> guests here. I don't understand that you got some great guys here. You got guys that actually know football on here. Why would you have Marvin Steele in the mix? I don't understand that, but it's okay. I'm here. I'm here to save the show. Let's get to it. What's up, Steve? What's up, man? How you doing? No good, man. Do you really have to have somebody drunk uncle on here? <laughs> is that really? Justin, is this, Justin, is this how y'all treat the star? Well, that's how we... Well, is as a good indicator of how somebody gets fired from the show. Exactly, exactly. In, in the, Keep it up, room. Marvin. Your day is a number, sir. I was <laughs> <laughs> still laughing what? at Steve, man. For B Sci Fi Week, he came and did a show at, at Bama. And uh, well, he got on Big D about them jogging pants he had on, man. The tight jogging pants. Well, I'm still crying, man. Well, hey, man. My life. Hey man, I'm I'm glad to be here with y'all, man. Justin, next time, um, listen, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to uh implement a rule. Uh, people can't be on the show with fake gold chains. So Marvin, if you will, if you can take that uh, <laughs> the chain from the bathtub, that that chain from the bathtub, stop her off. <laughs> you, you done yet? You done yet? <laughs> hey man, I'm done. Man. What's up, Bo? What's up, Steve? Man, you you kind of chocolate today, like you've been running the, running the fields of Green County. You, you. Probably so. <laughs> you got a chocolate there, fella. It's hot outside. Yeah. Okay. You be in the yeah. house all day. Hey, hey, man, no, man, I be out, I be outside, bro. I be outside, but but let's get to it, y'all. Let's get to it. I'm here now. Now the rain is starting to go up. I see. Let's get it. It's a, <laughs> there's a huge spike now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, crazy. Steve, you just uh, jumped in at the right time. We're talking about the quarterback situation and maybe taking a look at it in a different light. Not so much about who needs to win the job. But, you know, it's like I was saying, I don't feel like it, it matters who it is. Any three of the quarterbacks are going to po could possibly lead us to a victory. Our strength is in our running game and offensive line. And we're going to expound on that. Chris James is going to start things out. And then we'll work around to you, and then the pro throw, and then Bo. Yeah, um, you can kind of tell by like that we he wanted to get back. Coach Saban wanted to get back to the physical style running game by the old line coach he brought in because we were we were lacking physicality, man, for the last since what well, Najee last season was twenty. The last two years, I would say we were pretty much um, not able to run that we were like we were accustomed to for the last decade plus. But um, so I think we're getting back to that, man. And um, with the with the old lineman he's been bringing in and those backs of style that they that they have, man, I, you could tell the um, especially bringing in Reese, uh, Reese, Tommy Reese. Um, you could tell that we're trying to get back to the to the vintage Alabama football, man. That's that's what won us the most ships. That's what kept us there every year, every single year until you know we kind of got pretty and started trying to throw it fifty times a game. That's not you know that's not what who we are. Um, who what our team is made up of right now? We don't have we have great receivers, but there's it, it, no Amari Cooper running out that tunnel. You know what I'm saying? There's no Jerry Judy running out that tunnel. Or Calvin Ridley. We have some guys that are that are that are capable of being that, but you know, no one has proven to be that yet. But the backs that we have, we we have elite backs, and um, we have old linemen that are built, you know, to run behind like Latham and Booker, physical guys, man, big physical guys. And um, Proctor, and that's why I think he will um, he will have a, a a key piece, a key say in um, you know the the, the O line rotation this year. So man, you can you can just tell by how how we're building, bringing in those tight ends, those physical tight ends, and, and I just think that um, we're about to go back to ground and pound, man, and 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 play defense, run the ball. You're not gonna see, you may see, you know, some 40, 40 point games, but it's more. So I think we're gonna get back into the high thirties, you know, low forties, you know, just physically imposing our will on teams. And um, that's when we're at our best, when we can do that. Marvin? Well, I, I think what we're seeing right now is a direct 
uh, correlation to what happened last season and the season before, where, you know, you, you saw Alabama put up a lot of points, but well, I think our running back was our leading receiver last year. So, and, and as a direct result of that, you know, you've seen a lot of three and outs. You've seen a lot of times where that offense was not on the field long, which it meant that defense had to play more snaps. So you've seen those defenses get wore out as well. So when that offense struggled, you know, it was a direct impact on the defense as well. So I think they want to get back to controlling the clock, controlling that line of scrimmage so that we're not running our defense in the ground so that they're fresh and able to compete as well in, in late in games. Steve, the most important response of well, all. Thank you, man. I, I, right. I think that, that we're, we're getting back to the traditional Alabama football and I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it. Uh, I, I think, I think, um, that that's just what it is. We getting back to it, man. And um, it's going to be a great thing. And honestly, to me, everybody's been up in arms about the quarterback battle. It to me, if if if, if Coach Saban is going back to the tra traditional ground and pound play action, or whatever, it really doesn't matter who the quarterback is. That's why I feel like you know I got to say it again. I think Milro will be the quarter the, the starting quarterback because he can also he's also a, a, a dynamic playmaker with his feet. So I, I, I'm I'm excited about the offense. Believe it or not, I really am. All right, Pro, what, what, what is your take on it? And then, two, we're talking a lot about running. We're, we're kind of leaving the wide receivers out of the, out of the equation. W what do you need to see from the, these, this group of wide receivers? And is there necessarily going to be yeah, the, the, get the guy? A, a lot of fans are asking who's going to be the guy, the 1,000-yard dude. Do we need to be focusing on that? Well, I, I, I want to go back to uh, what Chris said. I, I think um... – you know, just going back to uh, you look at what was um, what was what we were good at back in the day was when we had an elite game manager. Uh, it wasn't necessarily an elite passer. It was an elite mm -hmm. man, took care of the ball. And then you look at the stable of guys that that we had in the backfield that and, and the big offensive line, that, you know, that we had. Uh, that was when Alabama was most successful. Uh, me as a receiver. Uh, and, and like to see high profile the offenses. I think uh, us as a fan base have got we got spoiled with the elite talent, elite passers that we had and the elite receivers uh, that we had that could, you know, basically run routes and get themselves open. And I think not seeing not seeing that this past year and not seeing that we don't have those elite receivers and we don't have you know, those are, I, I would say, those elite route runners and those the elite passers. And when you don't see that, you start to think, well, you know, we, we it's, it starts to make you think that our players are not as good. Uh, when we do have good players and we do have guys that can make um, – they can make plays, but I think the guys that we're used to seeing from the past offenses, the high profile offenses, the offenses that look pretty and put up points and guys that run routes and make you go ooh and ah, uh, I think not seeing that, um, it, it makes people worry that we don't, you know, we're, we don't have the talent. But I do think that, uh, you know, we're going back in the right direction to where we are. Uh, like you said, like Steve said, you don't have to have an elite quarterback. You just have I said that. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> the star. <laughs> that, that can manage the game. Thank you, Pro Throw. Thank you. I cannot turn the ball over. Uh, then I think, um, you know, it, we still have to get the defense back to where we were. And I think it was um, – I think it was, uh, you know, just to get it back to – you know, where we can we can get in somebody's face and play man coverage and, you know, get to the quarterback, um, finding those elite pass rushes that we used to have. Um, you know, and I think it's it's a step in the right direction. As far as receivers go, I, I do think we have, uh, you know, some guys that can make some plays. They're not going to be like the, the Coopers and the Ridleys and the Judys, uh, but I do think one uh, that I am um, – that I am high on is, is Isaiah Bond, man. I think mm -hmm. – I, I think he, that. he can really uh, be the next um, the next guy that we can depend on, the next guy that can blow the top off of it. Um, and he just – he looks the part, um, you know, when he's out there uh, running. And he looks like some of the receivers. He shows flashes of some of the receivers in the past. Um, and he's one that, that I think – and Ja'Cory Brooks will be uh, – I think he'll be just fine. Uh, I think, you know, he, he runs a good route. We just gotta, we just gotta get them to catching the ball and 
Um, like you said, the the play action and, and, and running routes and getting open, I think getting back to that, um, I think will get us in the right spot. You know what, Pro Throw? I want to tell you, man, I love you, man, for you know, for that analogy. Not football, just the fact that you brought up my name. I appreciate that. <laughs> I can't ask you for a better hype man than that. And I gotta bring you up. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's wonderful. I love that guy. <laughs> All right, Bo, that leaves you the final say-so on, on this topic right here. Does it matter who's the quarterback? I know you're excited. We got five dudes at running back that are legitimately going to take over, and we got an offensive coordinator who knows how to scheme to get things done. What's your take? Uh, I'm, I agree with uh, what Jane said, that uh, getting back to the physical run and the tradition of Alabama, uh, trying to run the ball and, you know, beat – beat um beat defense up and what we do in the first half of football and you know the second half will be real easy like we always do but like steve like steve brown said we just need someone to manage the game and um <laughs> <laughs> you did it again steve that's two that's two times we just need, we just need someone to manage manage the game and let our running back do what they do and get our receivers in space and you know hopefully they can catch the ball and um run the correct route and i think that Jalen Miro will be a part of that, um, but I think that when Jalen Miro playing, it, it take away from my throwing game, and they probably put one extra in the box since they know that he's a running quarterback as well. And um, with him in the game, I think we should run a triple option anytime they hit the game, or you know something like that. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, uh, Chris and um, Tyrone, did y'all notice something? You noticed that uh, everybody mentioned my name in their analogy, but Marvin, did y'all notice that? I noticed. It. I did I, notice that. Yeah, yeah. I just want y'all to. Why, why is that, Marvin? Why, Marvin? <laughs> so y'all gonna come on here? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I mean, this is an open space, Marvin. Uh, is there something from your childhood you need to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I believe somebody beat no Marvin. That's what I believe. Somebody beat no Marvin. <laughs> it will pain me to agree with Steve. Okay. It will pain me. Somebody beating on that dude, man. Somebody beating on him. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't happening. Some some somebody that didn't agree with his book. Somebody beating on him. Somebody beating on him. <laughs> Look here, Gilligan. I'm gonna need you to calm down over there. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that was crazy, man. Well, folks, in five minutes, we're gonna have this week's top fan come on to ask his question. It's one of our new segments we've installed to give back to you, the fans, and draw engagement. Uh, before we do all that, Pro, what do you feel about Kendrick Law? I look at him, and I kind of see a little yes. bit of you in him, a guy that can be a switchblade, can do just about everything. Is there something, anything about his game that you're excited about, and what can you see him doing in this Tommy Reese offense? No, I think, um, you know, I think he'll be a – he can be a, a big-time playmaker also. Um, you know, a guy that you can you can move around. And uh, he seems to me like a, a little bit of a bigger receiver. Um, you know, not necessarily the, the you know, the, the slim get in and out of cuts type of receiver, but he does. Uh, he runs good routes and he gets open. Uh, but I think he can be one of those type of guys that uh, can be one of the next big playmakers for us. He he reminds me of uh, what you call is his name Debo Samuels a little bit yeah yeah no doubt. you hit all I was about to say mm-hmm. good but yes but I said I said I said that though I said that. You, you wait 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 did you hear that you Steve? did you hear Marvin did you hear Marvin Steve, he was too what did he say talking I, I, he, he missed it. his Steve. point you missed it you Steve, missed what did he say good point he ain't gonna get, say it. he ain't gonna say it again he gonna say yeah, it again what you say Marvin. <laughs> you missed the unicorn, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm gonna tell you somebody who I'm not sold on though. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Your, your boy from the, the transfer from Georgia, he gonna he gonna have to oh, be more man. consistent. You yeah. have to be more consistent and and or or I believe that he's gonna be a second or third stringer. I mean, I mean he, he played around last year. I mean, to me, he's he's kind of in my doghouse already. Uh first of all. You know, with the thing, uh, with him hitting the girl in Tennessee, we kind of let him slide with that. Then, he, and then after the A day game, he's shooting birds and all this type of stuff. So, you know, uh, and then, and then 
all the stuff you're doing, you're not producing like you're supposed to. So I'm I'm kind of keeping my eye on him. I, I I I'm not me and my doghouse right now. I don't even lie to you. What's his name? Um, what's name? Burton. 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 Yeah, I'm not. I'm. Yeah. Uh. Nah, nah, nah. You can't. You can't. You can't even get freed up. You know, you can't get open. You can't. You 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 inconsistent with catching the ball, and you're doing a little stupid stuff. And you're supposed to be an upcoming senior, I think. No, nah, bro. I, the, the, that's to me. That's you. You looking like a little cancer in the locker room to me. I'm just you know what Marvin used to be. You know what you tell him about how you used to be, Marvin. You know. Yeah. yeah. Just talk about that, Marvin. <laughs> I'm gonna let you add up. <laughs> I will. I will say another receiver that uh that you know we really haven't talked about is the one one from Kaleer. I can't. His name is in my Kobe head. Kobe Prentice. Kobe. Yeah, Prentice. I like him. I, I like him. I, I was I like that guy. Yeah, yeah me too. too. He's a Mike McCoy guy. Uh, he uh, and, and he is one that I'm I'm uh excited to see what after a a pretty good freshman year uh he is one that i'm interested to see how he's how he's improved over the summer on the off season over the off season and to see what he brings to the table for i was really impressed with, with him yeah like, like i said i'm i'm i, I want to see bird mature you know what i mean and and hopefully hopefully he will i'm pulling for him but yeah. come on man Steve, you the know? thing is he's on a short lease and by i mean what i mean by short leash is one link uh, well, he yeah. doesn't have a whole lot of room for error right now. These young dudes that we just mentioned, they're mm -hmm. ready, man. They're ready to bust out of the stable. Well, well that's, that's yeah. what I was about to say. It's going to be interesting to see who emerges as that leader from that wide receiver group to be that guy to take them to that next level. Because until we get to that point, you know, that offense, it, it won't be able to take that next step that it'll need to take, even if we run the ball. Because running the ball well, that's fine and good. But if nobody's ever going to respect our, you know, our deep ball, right. then – we're always going to be, you know, in a bad situation. But Marvin, the thing is that that if we're running the ball uh, three yards, three and a half yards, four yards in a cloud of dust, trust me, that play action is going to open up eventually. It's going to open up. So, 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 I, I really believe that that if the run, if the running game does as well as we as we think it's going to do, I think that it's going to open up a lot of a lot of uh, key passes for us. I really believe that. Yeah, but we're still going to need a. Uh, a guy to step up to be that number one receiver, though. We Mom, are you disputing that. me? Are you disputing me again? No, I'm agreeing. <laughs> with you, but I'm saying we'll still Wait. need that one that guy to step up to be that number one guy. Man. I think it's gonna be that new guy. What's what the guy you no just mentioned? Him. That'd be Malik, Malik, Malik Benson. Benson. I believe it's gonna be him. He, 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 just, he just looks the part. He looks the part. He does look the part. He does look the part. M M Malik Benson is that guy that that can be. That that next first rounder, man. Like he has that type. If you put on his JUCO tape, man, he it looks like his film is is, is played in um in fast motion, kind of like yeah. Jerry Gill's film was. He, he's like, faster he, than everybody on the field. Faster than everybody on the field. field. So like so, I was. So so, so yeah, the thing about on him, PlayStation. Yeah. So um the thing about him, he can be that one. He can be that number one. Law is like well, Steve said, uh, another Debo Samuel. He he has that type of potential. Um, they can use them out of the backfield, use them in so many different line them up in so many different ways. Possession and, uh, receiver. He uh, but he's a little more possession because after he the is catch, more he, than that. he's he 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 can I would say Brooks is more of a possession receiver. I yeah. think he's an athlete. Like you yeah, can't, you don't label him as just a receiver. I think he's an athlete. You can move him around uh, anywhere and he can do different things uh for the offense. So he's kind of like he said, that's yeah. Knife that you can just put in, uh, yeah, like like I was at the Parkview <laughs> Learning Center, yeah. <laughs> Back when you was a possession receiver, <laughs> you received three to five for possession. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Marvin. Hey, can you get him off the show? This is like y'all, ladies and gentlemen. That's we okay. just have a uh, we have an announcement that this is Marvin's <laughs> last show, and I am so proud. <laughs> Steve, I remember your best game when you uh at Parkview against the Make a Wish kids. Man, you were fantastic. Hey man, listen, don't do that. Don't 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 bring up my past. Don't bring up my past. All these fellas are gonna be jealous of my stats. Don't do that. <laughs> well, if, well, bring on our top fan. I wanted to bring up something. Bo, you yeah. actually inspired it. Uh back at the show that you did at the Bryant Museum, you were saying that we don't have the big names, so to speak, going into this season. Can you explain why this is a good thing and why it can be dangerous to our opponents? Just so in case anybody missed your explanation during that show. 
I really don't remember what my explanation was when I said that. <laughs> So that been so long ago, Steve. Uh, well, I, I think it, it had to do with in terms of like blinking lights being distractions. You know, a lot of hype coming in, and instead of being humble and and, and doing the work and, and not feeling like you've already got there. I think Everybody, kind of, in, the ones that's coming in entitled. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 like. Um, I mean, like, yeah, we don't have any big names, sort of kind of say, but we do have those names that jump out the tape at you, you know, that you can pick and choose the one that, you know, is putting in the work. But, mm -hmm. but uh, um, we get we got a we got a bunch of guys that I think that got their head down and, and really working, and you know, uh, and gonna prove the world wrong, especially from what they're saying about Alabama this year. They we we got a lot of doubters. Yeah, uh, Alabama this year, and I'm sure the players. I'm sure the players know that because when, when I was there, we would know, you know, and it, it's all around. And I'm pretty sure that you know that's a, a another a, a uh, another motivation for them, you know, to prove the world wrong. Because now, right now, it's Alabama against everybody. If mm -hmm. Yeah, you say it. Hey, hey yeah. so let, let me ask y'all this: What do y'all think about? And I'm just real quick: What do y'all think about uh, Milro taking uh, the, uh, a lot of players on the team down to Florida and, and working out? I thought that's that was huge. a good look too. That's that's Blake, huge right now. Taking the Bulls by the horn like Blake Sims did. Right. Yeah. 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 I just, Sir, I'm trying. You know, just showing that he wants to be the leader. He wants to have. Uh, he wants it to be his team. He wants everybody to buy in with him. Um, and I think, you know, getting together and, and coaches, uh, we see getting them together, the coaches see him getting them together. Um, and he's really just kind of gaining the trust of the team. And uh, when it comes down to it, and if it's neck and neck and coaches have to look at, well, you know, he does, you know, if the last thing is, you know, who is the team rallying around him? Uh, yeah. I think that goes a long way. Um, in in the process of, you know, who's going, who's going to take the ball. Yeah. Hey, Justin, I, mm. I keep hearing this term taking the bull by the horns, but every time I'm with a girl, I hear taking the puppy by the tail. Is that the same thing? <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. You're on the same track. All right. I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Only you. Only you. Hey, I'm just Justin, wondering. One, one last thing, man. Um, two guys that you can't sleep on, Emmanuel Henderson. Mm -hmm. Um, you remember he 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 he's converted um receiver from running back and um and freshman incoming freshman from Texas he, who um had a great spring Jalen Hale, those are two guys that really could throw monkey wrenches in their wide receiver rotation. No doubt, uh, Emmanuel Henderson, Kenyon Drake, two point oh, essentially. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, it's time for our new segment, and that's the Bama Standard Top Fan, where we choose the top fan each week to come on. And ask the panel a question and hang with us until he gets everyone to answer. And how do we pick this, you, you ask? Well, you have to be involved. You have to be in the group chat. You have to be uh, asking questions. And the gentleman we have on this week has been with us since the very beginning. He's watching all of our shows, including Chris James' show that comes on after us at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, tonight. <laughs> and I will bring him in right now. None other Dan Lushon, welcome in, sir. Glad to have you on with this star-studded panel. What's happening, man? How you doing? Let me let me let me go and get my answers ready now. <laughs> I appreciate being on with y'all. What's up, um, man? You know, uh, it's an honor to be on here with four of the toughest dude to ever wear crimson and white. Justin, thanks for having me. Steven, yeah, I'm not really sure what you got going on over there, but what's up? <laughs> <laughs> um. But he's knowledgeable, guys. This isn't just some random Walmart Bama fan. He knows his stuff, so he's going to challenge each of you. And I think his question is going to be more towards Marvin because he's a big Marvin Constant fan. But, yeah, two weeks in a row. Whoa, 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 we keep whoa, finding whoa, these Marvin about. Constant guys. Whoa, whoa. You a fan of Marvin Constant? Well, I, yeah, definitely. But I'm also Okay, so you need, you need to leave. You need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a fan of Bo, too. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, the the reason is I'm a fan of both of these two guys is they actually tie into my question what I'm going to ask the panel tonight. Um, Saban used to talk about toughness. 
Now, it's been some time since we've actually seen that. And I actually think the last time I personally saw that was number nine, Toting the Rock, Ooh. that team. So I guess my first question is to Marvin. Who do you feel on the defensive side that needs to step up and be that tough guy, that Ryan Anderson maniac type of dude, that just thumper? Ooh. Well, I always say your defense is going to start with your middle linebacker. So whoever ends up taking that starting job at middle linebacker, maybe it'll be Black is, Huh? What, who do you want it to be? Who do you want it to be? I have no preference on who I want it to be. I want it to be a guy who's going to come in and command that team, command that defense, you know, bring back the enforcer mentality and lead his troops. Because I say it all the time. So goes the middle linebacker, so goes the defense. They feed off his play. So I want it to be the biggest, baddest dog we got that's going to get in there and get nasty every play and who's going to lead by example. He's going to light a fire under everybody else on that defense. And every Saturday, you're going to see them boys show up, come do work. That's who I want to see. All Steve, right, he doesn't right. know the roster. That's why I didn't give a name. Right. <laughs> hey man, you never know who might be a starter. You know, you got. You don't have guys. a roster. You don't have yeah. a roster. No, no I don't. mean, there, there, there's about six guys that can for real start for us. I mean, yeah, but you don't have a roster though. Yeah. I got mine. I got mine. You should ask me, but could you ask him? Go ahead. No, I'm gonna go with Chris next. Hey Justin, don't invite him back. <laughs> <laughs> they football guys, man. Come on now. I am too. Steve, um, Steve played at Parkview. He was all conference. Yeah. Where's Where's Stacy Adams? Yeah. Do your research, sir. That's the question. I'm mad at you. <laughs> okay. I, I, Chris James, I who in the secondary all... do you think do you think needs to do be that tough guy, that that maker, that that Eddie Jackson type? That's a good question, man. Because I I, I really think Caleb Downs is gonna is gonna be that enforcer from day one. That we've been missing on the back. I mean, we had it with Helms. It's just that Helms was that's that's pretty much what he what he gave you. Um, I think Downs is gonna be the first safety we had in a while, probably since Xavier McKinney, that could that could play just as good Everything. um as, as coverage as he can coming down here being in the force land that wood. Because we had Chris, no Chris, 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 no no, no disrespect, but why y'all why y'all keep jumping over Malachi Moore? That dude is a beast. Thank yeah, I, I, no, 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 no. It's not that. It's just that I think that Malachi, he, he's, he's watching his army knife, but he has to stay healthy. Show. I, I love, I love Malachi, and I, I think that um, it, when it comes to him, he's going to be the brains in the secondary. He's going to get everybody lined up. But but doubt. think about this. But think about this. The only reason he lost his position last last year because he got hurt. Hurt. He yeah. was he was, he was in front of him. Yeah, Malachi's yeah, it, that dude. It, it, he I is. Like I he is, especially if he can get back to his freshman form with the right. it was injuries. It had nothing to do with injuries. But that's not but that's not his 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 game. He can be physical. But I, I think that man, if you watch Caleb Downs, man, from a physical standpoint, that, that boy, man, he, he has a has a level. Um Malachi is more of a I, I like him better in the Minka role in the slot, the playing the money, playing the star. And um I, I love him right there, man, because he's so smart and and for anybody to pick up Coach Saban's defense as a true freshman, he and I don't think he enrolled until the summer and started. I mean, man, that's 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 amazing. I'm and, you know, I'm I'm looking at the guy that got in trouble. They're speaking highly on oh, him. Tony Mitchell, man, is a dog. The, I heard he's a big dude, too. Tony Mitchell is a dog, bro. He is and he can dog. drive a car fast. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Nah, what? I mean, Marvin, no. Marvin can drive a car fast too. <laughs> now I, I, I like Malachi. And I, I, when Malachi first got here, I thought he was more of a um, honey badger type player. Yeah, guy that can make those type of plays for us. You can put him anywhere, and he can roam around. And uh, injuries has kind of uh, hindered yeah. him, but I think if he can get back to that form, uh, I am high on him. And I think this year should probably be it. it should be a good year for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am, I am Malachi. Yeah, it just seems like the media and everybody's like, like really like not mentioning this dude. And this dude was a beast when he was playing before he got hurt. He really was. Well, well I, I think it's more so, um, kind of underappreciated. You, you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's somebody that you that you know is going to get the job done. 
So those yeah. guys right there, he's not really flashy. He's he's a football player. Right. He's not exactly. he's not flashy. He don't get up doing all that celebrating and stuff like that. You know, he's not he doesn't bring attention to himself. Those type of football players, you know, can can go unheralded, but he's he's a dog, man. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. He can stay healthy. If he can stay yeah. healthy, he can regain that draft stop that he had. Under un, underappreciated on the show, right, Lucius? <laughs> <laughs> I should be mentioned all the time. Go ahead, Caleb, ask the question. But, but, Caleb, but, Caleb, but Caleb Downs is my answer, man. I, I think that he's gonna uh, he, he's gonna be that dude, man. That um that, that brings it back, man. Um, uh, I, I don't like your answer. I'm, I'm not gonna <laughs> mention Kool Aid because they not Kool Aid not gonna see much action this year. They just not teams not gonna test Kool Aid, man. He he's not gonna uh, gonna see much action. And I think he overrated. No, 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 no. Let me tell you what's good about Kool Aid. Let me tell you what's good about Kool Aid. Kool Aid technique is flawed. You got to understand, Kool Aid was splitting time with basketball until he got to Bama. So he he never really was just a football player. He was hopping. Okay, I I get that. I get that. You can tell this past season when he when he put that basketball down and went strictly to football. Had a whole year of football, like. That dude, man, his technique, man, the, the, he's physical. He's big. He's like 6'1 now, close to yeah. 200. He can run. Yeah, he got bigger. He got bigger. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah you he kind of remind me of me, you know, water aerobics and football and, uh, you know. <laughs> I, I actually think he grew, man. I think he grew a couple of inches since he's been on campus. I, I, I think I was, he's grown a couple of inches. But um, I was, Kool-Aid I was, I was is, totally. is what – now, the sleeper man is Malachi uh, – is not Malachi Moore. It's um, Terry on Arnold. That's the guy that really could take – this secondary from being great to elite. Terry on okay. he has a, if he plays to his capabilities, this secondary could be like tops in the country. It, hey, Lucius. Hey, hey, Lucius, if you notice something, uh, Chris and everybody else mentioned names. Marvin did. You know why? Because we all got rosters. Marvin don't. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, can, you, can you ask the next question, sir? I hope it's about me. All right. Hey, uh, bro. <laughs> Who do you feel uh, on the offensive side needs to uh, show something? Uh, well, I think that, you know, it just has obviously the, the run game. You want somebody to to step up in the run game. But like I said earlier, uh, I think, you know, maybe one or two receivers need to uh, step up and be, uh, and be the guy because, I mean, you can, you can get the big offensive line and you can get, um, you know, the great running backs. But what you're going to do when, when people stack the box and say, Hey, you know, we don't got no respect for your receivers. So if you have receivers that can't, you know, can't get open and they can't, you know, run routes and catch balls, then uh, then what teams are going to do is they're just going to stack the box and, and make us try to throw the ball. Uh, but I think, like I said, I like Isaiah Bond. Uh, he is one that that I'm high on, and, and Kobe Prentice is another one. Uh, you you want to say uh, Jermaine Burton because he is kind of I felt he feels like the older guy of the bunch. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, he hasn't, I guess he hasn't, you know, panned out to what, you know, what we expect, but maybe this, this may be the year that, you know, they actually gets involved and, and start making a play. So, it, you know, it, it really has to be when you don't have those receivers, uh, like your Ridley's and your Judy's, um, and, and Cooper's, you have to be by committee and you just got to have, you have to have mm-hmm. multiple guys that, uh, teams can't key on, you know, we're going to, you know, double team him and because the other rest of the receivers can't really uh, can't really run routes and get open. But you had to have a committee of guys. When you don't have that one dog uh, that people fear, you have to have a committee of guys. All right. Bo, who do you, th- who do you feel on the offensive line? You know, you are running back the Bama Hammer. Who do, who do you feel that needs to have an impact on the line this year? Um, I interior guys, um, especially running between the tackles. So I, 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 our front three guys, not the not the tackles. I'm talking about the two guards in the center. Uh, those most important um position on the field because that's a direct line to the quarterback. So I think that we should get we have more push up front and um you know keep the guy in front of them and get a head on the head and push the guy back. Especially in the run game, we need some nasty dudes up front, man. Some Cam Robinson, some, some guys who ain't scared to get dirty and down in the dirt. And uh, um, I just think we need some we need some physical guys up front as well, man. Uh, this past season, I thought they was a little bit soft. Uh, so I think that 
you know, with how mm-hmm. Coach Saban described toughness and his um in his meeting with them, that that made me feel like that he put them through some things uh this off this off season. So I, I'm looking forward to a run hard uh offense and an offense that real nasty and back into the 2009-2010 offense type of style. So for me, I think those guys should be great in the interior. Solid Good answer. Yes, yes, Steve. Anything you like to add? Uh, he we... asked four questions and none of them was directed to me. Well, I gotta save the best for last. Oh, oh hell yeah. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, really, really. Uh, for real though, I don't. I don't feel like our tight end room uh, is getting enough respect. Do you? Do you see anybody that could possibly step up and bring back? You know, I don't want to dare say any names, but you know, we've had some pretty legendary tight ends. Do you think we might have one or two of those? Maybe three flash this season. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. There are three. We we named four off air that could easily ball out uh easily dan lewis jr uh this guy's got tremendous upside we start to see a little bit of what he's capable of during the a-day game uh mari nyblack man when he goes off he's a matchup nightmare there's no one who's gonna be able to match up against him not only his position if you split him out wide there, there's not a db in the country that's gonna be able to cover him then you got robbie Oots who can virtually play anything a he's my favorite that, one my favorite uh, one I think that he can be used in a way similar to what Jalston Fowler was used. And if that's the mm-hmm. case, man, you, uh, defenses are going to hate Robbie Oots. So he's, you know, he's a blocking machine. And the, the, trans, the Maryland transfer. C.J. Dupree. Oh, yeah, C.J. Dupree. Yeah, he's a dog, man. It, it, uh, underrated athleticism. Just put hey, it on man. I'm sorry. I think Robbie Oots is the most valuable tight end we got. He is a. I mean, have you have you seen the way this guy blocks? He doesn't quit. He's he's he he. I think he exemplifies physicality. This, this dude. This, he's that dude. He's, he's that dude. From, he's different from them because you're not gonna split them out like you split out a, a nine black or you may split out a a, a, a different depending on a, you know the, the circumstances. But Oots is a type. He's the only one that we have like that on the roster. So he can't. We can't afford to lose him. No, nah. you ain't gonna him. split him out. He, 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 you ain't gonna split him out, but he'll split your ass. Right between the tight end, that tight <laughs> 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 All right, so go ahead, uh, Lucius. I'm waiting. All right, Steve. Yes. Give me your top <laughs> five freshmen that are gonna make impacts this season. We ain't not already named them. Go ahead. <laughs> Where your roster at, Steve? Where your roster at, Steve? I can answer that for you. I, mean, I can give you mine easily. I yeah. can give, I can answer that for you. Okay. I might be able to give you five. <laughs> Job, <laughs> Malachi, <laughs> John, <laughs> Adam. Steve, Lucia, Steve, I, I, I can answer that for you, Lucian. Steve Brown yeah. and Job are the show. <laughs> I, I can What's up? Can, can, somebody that's actually got a roster. Hey, Caleb Downs, number one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Justice, yeah. Justice Haynes. Yeah. Uh, ju- ju- Justice Haynes. I like Keon Killy. Yep. I think that, that boy right there is going to is gonna, 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 gonna do something this year. Caden Proctor. Mm-hmm. And James Smith, the D lineman from Montgomery. Those I'd are the five. That, 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 I think it's gonna five. be more than five that make an impact. But it's gonna be more than five. Gonna it's gonna be more than five. Eight, because I feel like Olas Aylenin gonna make some noise, and I feel like yeah. Tony Mitchell's gonna McVay. get on the field too. They're gonna play. Both of them are gonna play. I agree. Hey, and I you agree. can't count out Yonze Pierre. That that dude is Tim Williams, except for like hybrid. He, yeah. He's mm. gonna be scary. He's gonna be scary. I'm telling you. Well, it, right it, now, let me tell you what's crazy is Alien. He could take over. It depends on. Ferguson, Terrence Ferguson at guard. If Ferguson doesn't grab that bull by the horn, it may be a freshman starting at guard this year. Or that oh, puppet by the tail. Yeah. Or that by the tail. Yeah. So, <laughs> Lucius, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Since you got all the questions, let me. Now you got to give us an answer. Do you think that this show 
should be named after me. <laughs> <laughs> the Steve, the Steve standard. I got it. I got it. I got. It, I got. It, I got. It, I got. It. It's very, very simple. <sighs> Do you feel that Pete Golden was a good coach? Hell no. Okay. Not, 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 that's your answer. <laughs> Justin, don't invite him. Justin, don't invite him. As a matter of fact, Justin, 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 as a matter of fact, you like that, Steve? Justin, don't invite him back. As a matter of fact, and next show, invite a white boy. We ain't got time for this. We ain't got time for this. We ain't got time for this. Right into it. Shut up, Marvin. You told him to do this. Are you smart than a fifth grader? <laughs> Lucius, Lucius, we appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks a lot for, hey, for supporting fun, man. for yeah, supporting the Bama standard. Always. We appreciate you, man. Yeah, no, you know why I right. said that? You know why you I said that? Because you, you, you gotta go. You gotta go. You get rid of me. <laughs> Roll tide, Lucian. We appreciate you. Appreciate right. you, man. Roll Thanks time. a lot, man, for coming on. Roll tide. Roll tide, brother. Hey, hey Justin, yeah. just don't don't bring him back. Don't bring him back. <laughs> I, I'm getting a female. Uh, just yeah, to avoid yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I like a man. Bring him on the final whistle, man. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> folks, that is the Bama Standard Top Fan segment. You can be a part of that if you show us that you're our top fan. We're watching the, ch the chat. We're watching the comment section. But also email us, thebamastandard at gmail.com to tell us why you should be on and why you are the top fan. And we will make our selection for next week soon. I don't All right, like guys, it. It, <laughs> we have kind of come towards the end portion of our show. Before I do that, bro, I got to ask you a question about when you play. Can you give us a, a moment, your best moment when you gave somebody that work? The Citizen Club. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> CC, baby, uh, the Marvin spot. <laughs> no, 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 no. You the, took me the, CC. You took me the CC. <laughs> oh, we got confessions, Steve. We got confessions on this. The episode. I roll with Marvin. <laughs> hey man, you gonna get banned, all right? <laughs> no, I think uh the, the one time that I can think of where it's actually against um it was at a practice at the Music City Bowl. Um and I don't know if Chris remembers this, but uh we had one on ones uh and it was one of the last practices at the Music City Bowl and we were going one on ones with our DBs and I think everybody Everybody was baking our DBs. Oh yeah, uh, it, it was it was like nobody was losing. Everybody was running good routes and killing folks, and we running double moves, making people look stupid. And it was actually it was one of the funnest times uh, as a group that I think uh, we came together and we were, you know, we were having fun, and it was it was good com good competition. We were competing with each other, and that was probably one of my. Uh, one of my funnest moments um, is just seeing us compete against each other like that. And and, and actually that day, uh, we got the better of them. There were some days, I ain't going to lie, there were some days they got us too. But just that day, uh, we all were just, you know, I, I think we torched them pretty good that day. You, you keep yeah. pro, um, Matt, DJ. DJ. Oh, oh man, it was, it was crazy, man. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. so the, it was cold, so too. The, it was cold, bro. It was cold. so so yeah you you, you mentioned yeah y'all mentioned that day but do y'all to dis uh, care to discuss the nights at the Citizen Club though that's what we <laughs> waiting on. That's, hey, that's, no, that's what you got to take over Tony Dixon and Marvin. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so bent on throwing me under the bus? <laughs> hey, hey y'all would ever phone me y'all they closed down when we got there they they closed it down. It was yeah. Nice. <laughs> they took us on a visit. When I got back to camp and said, what happened to CC? Man, they don't shut it down. Football. Marvin got naked in there. They shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> then they went to the after party. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At, at the moon weeks. B-side fire parties. B-side fire. How much I had it. Ever. <laughs> All right. And one last thing. Uh, your favorite game. Other than your famous game against Southern Miss, your favorite game. Oh, I tell a lot of people all the time. My my favorite game, uh, it's actually my my best and my worst game, uh, all in one, and that's the Florida game. Uh, just the the atmosphere, man. It was like no other. Uh, from the start of the game to the end of the game, 
Uh, and, you know, and even though I, you know, I had my injury that game, just the, the type of game that I was having and, you know, the type of fun that we were having doing it against the, you know, the caliber team that we were playing, <laughs> uh, that was one of the, one of the funnest games that, you know, that I was um, able to you know, participate in. And, you know, like I said, it didn't end the way I wanted it to end, but uh, boy, was that game fun. No doubt. And lastly, what is your Mount Rushmore of wide receivers at Alabama? Ooh, don't ask. I don't ask. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I will tell you, I, I think my favorite uh, is Amari Cooper. Uh, I love Julio to death, but I think uh, Amari Cooper kind of was one of the first ones to start the whole uh, elite route running uh guys that was chopping you know chopping guys up and and me as a receiver i love to see that type of stuff because route running has evolved since you know i was in since i was in school since i was mm -hmm. coming you know, we ran good routes but just to see that what these guys are putting into the routes and just the uh improvising that they do man just watching them it, it's it's like art uh, watching these elite route runners run routes and to see them bake dbs and stuff like that but uh I'm not going to give a, a Mount Rushmore because there's a ton of It's a hard that. question. But, yeah. but, I, but I think my my favorite uh, is, is Amari Cooper. Hey, 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 Justin, you know what, man? J that's just like asking about the defenses, man. Bama teams and players have been so great. That's almost like an unfair question. And I think it, it, it is, it's a question that will never be legitimately answered. Like when you ask about the defenses. Yeah. And the Mount Rushmore running backs, and and, and the I, you can't answer it. it or the Mount Rushmore wide receivers, you can't answer it. You can't. Now, now I, I can tell you who who is the hardest throwing uh, un, uh, uh, unaccurate quarterback that's ever come through Bama, and that's Freddie Kitchens. But Freddie listen, Kitchens. this is for another show. <laughs> That'll be a topic of next week's show. Right, anyway. right. He threw, he, I remember he threw the ball so hard it went through the screen and hit me. I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Pro. Yeah. It's, two, it's two games that stood out for you, for me, man. Your freshman year, that Kentucky game when you brought back that kickoff return for, mm -hmm. for a touchdown. We ran back that kickoff return. We took pride, man, because we knew you were going to it, house it, you know, have a good return. So we took pride, you know, blocking on kickoff return. You know what I'm saying? You know you got a return, man, that's going to house it. In that South Carolina game mm. that year. Oh, yeah. That was oh, a great yeah. game. Oh, my God. That, that, that's when I said pro going to be in that high because you never got hurt, dude. You'd have been in that high conversation. Like, real back, talk. It's not a game. You, you and Darby? Oh, yeah. And I'll, and I'll put on the show, bro. It was a fun one for me, too, man, because that's uh, I've always thought running back was my home position. Uh, I was a running back in high school, and that was kind of my position to, um, you know, that's where I excelled at. Um, you know, I was strong enough to run between the tackles, I was fast enough to get to the outside. Um, I just thought I, I personally thought I was too small to play running back at the next level, so I chose to play receiver. Um, Me too. Well, but, damn good one. But you know, I, I do think uh, you know, just that game. You know, I had three carries. I think like eighty-two yards rushing off of three kicks. Spin um, move. You know, it, it was it was a fun game just because I got to go back to running back, and they started to put me back at running back, and I got to start doing some things that uh, that I that I love to do. That, that was that's what's up. All right, before we move into our closing segment, I see a lot of questions in the chat. And we did cover almost all your questions, so y'all definitely need to go back and watch the replay if you missed anything. But now as we close things down, we're going to go around the room as we always do, allowing these guys to pop what they got. And I'm going to start with Marvin Constant, as always. Oh, What's going on yeah. with 40 Plus? How can they get their hands on it? And where are you going on vacation next week? Hey, man. Shh. Um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Constant45. There's a link on my IG as well to Amazon to actually grab a copy of my book. Again, if you're in your late 30s, 40s, 50s, and you're looking for a resource that's going to help you get back in shape and stay on track, best 15 bucks you ever spend. You can get back in peak physical <laughs> condition, baby. Here we go. Just halt the top on. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you see them guns, baby. Steve, see, he just, Steve just a hater. <laughs> oh, I need your IG, Bo. Ah, uh, yeah, I got you. Uh, it's Bo Scott, bro. Oh, just Bo. Okay. Are uh, you put five T A R B O? Steve Brown, what you got coming up, man? Any shows? Hey, man. First of all, you can follow me on Instagram, Comic Steve Brown. My new website is up, SteveBrownComedy.com. 
Follow me uh, on Facebook, Comedian Steve Brown. And of course, for the Christians, yes, I am on Christian Mingles, a hard up beacon, <laughs> hard underscore, hard up beacon uh, underscore. And uh, yeah, I'll be in Warner Robins, Georgia, Saturday. The show is already sold out, so ain't no sense in going. So yeah, so that's what's going on with me, man. And, um, and just working just on a lot of stuff. Man. Did you say hard Steve, up That's an hour from me, Steve. I'm in Auburn. Uh, I'm an hour and 15 minutes away from Warner Robins, man. Yeah, I'll be that side. Come on, come on through. I try to squeeze you in because you know you're a big boy. I squeeze you in. <laughs> hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. That didn't sound right. That didn't sound right. I get you. In. I get you. In. I get you. In. I get you in. No, I know what you mean. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, I got you. You gonna squeeze him in? Hey, hey man, shut out, bro. I'm too dirty now. I got you, brother. Squeeze him in, now. Yeah, squeeze. Shut him. up. <laughs> <laughs> Bo, can you squeeze in what you got going on? How people can find you? All the many things you're a part of. Man, this show is turning to something else. Hey, I can't squeeze that in. <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, nah, no, man, crazy we, uh, deal, man. We got our last two. Uh, we got our last two game away, uh, so we have to win them to clinch the playoff. Actually, uh, and if we do win those two games, I'm pretty sure that we will have the playoff here in Birmingham. So uh yeah man we uh dealing with that and um we dealing with the new CBA that's gonna come out next year uh for the USFL and um you can find me on Instagram with Bo Scarborough and um you can also find me on Cameo as Bo Scarborough for videos and whatever you may need birthdays graduation uh whatever and uh, yeah that's it for me uh sir you forgot one more thing what uh tomorrow. 7.30, the developmental focus point. 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. Right here on this channel. And speaking of right here on this channel, I'm going to let Chris take the mic next. Tell the folks what you got going on. And for those of you living under a rock, tell them about your show that can be found on this channel and all your yeah, social man. media. Yeah. Um. First off, um, tune in at 9 p.m. Central in about 45 minutes. We're going with the final whistle with Matt Cadell, myself, um, my brother Dan. That's why I got Chris James, a.k.a. Dan's big brother. Um, Coach Coach Spook, Ty Hayes, and, and the, the man just of himself. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good show, you know, the, the kind of counter off of this one right here where we discuss other topics. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Chris K. James Sr., on uh, Instagram at CKJ Senior32 and on um, Twitter at Coach Chris James. Um, you can find me on those. And uh, and man, I, I, I enjoyed tonight with you guys, man. Uh, it's it's an honor, you know, to be up here amongst my brethren, man, that that, that laid out on the line and with you, Steve, man. Because dude, man, I appreciate the last over the years, man. You, you keep them coming, man. You never disappoint, bro. So no, no, nothing about my football skills, nothing. Oh man, I heard you a five, bro. I heard you a five. Thank with you, it. thank you. Hey, listen, man. So uh, next time, invite me on your show. Invite me on your show. Man, you gotta come. Just hey, yeah. Man, yeah. you welcome whenever, man. You yeah, I believe it'll be a good look. I think the Raiders will shoot up. I really believe absolutely. that. Absolutely, absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah, and, and that's the yeah. final yeah. whistle on Tuesday nights, eight p.m. Central, nine p.m. Eastern. And before I let Pro close us out, next week. Marvin Constant is going to be on vacation. So Nobody this is going to be cares. our Nobody cares. This is going to be our opportunity to invite all of our LinkedIn candidates to apply for his position. So just get, oh, yep. oh he's, he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> but actually uh, Jimmy Johns is going to take his spot next week, so we'll definitely have someone almost as worthy, but not quite. And who don't quite post himself shirtless as much as Marvin, but why we, why is it are you on the show? No, just kidding. <laughs> We're gonna miss you, brother. But enjoy yourself. <laughs> enjoy yourself next week for sure, brother. Where, much where you where you going? Where you going? Where you going, Marvin? Ain't going nowhere, man. Oh, okay. You, you probably gonna be a... you you'll be in Atlanta this weekend, man. Yeah, this weekend I'll be here. Yeah, yeah I, next I... weekend you will be too. You ain't going no damn well. You be acting <laughs> like you're going, so you're gonna go right to Jonesboro. You ain't going no damn well. <laughs> I'll holler at you Friday, Marvin. I'll be up your way Friday. I'll holler at you. All right, that'll work. All right, Tyrone Prothrow, the most electrifying man to ever play for Alabama.
<laughs> oh yeah, brother. Oh, yeah. We appreciate you doing your thing on the field and on this show. Tell the folks what you got coming next, how they can find you, and all that good stuff. Oh, uh, they can find me on uh, on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Pro Throw the Number Four, um, and then on Facebook, just my name Tyrone Pro Throw. Um, you know, I'm currently I'm up in uh, at Jasper High School um, teaching and coaching, uh, just trying to you know trying to make you know one kid at a time, trying to better one kid at a time, and trying to be an influence, uh, a positive influence for you know some of the younger uh, younger kids uh, that are coming up and just trying to make a difference. So, so pro throw, y'all, do you think y'all can hire like a bad role model like me so I can kind of balance it out? <laughs> See, I, I don't, I don't think there's no chance. I don't oh, think there's no yeah, chance. I just wonder, just wonder. Man, <laughs> man, Steve, glad he's yeah, God. Yeah. <laughs> hey, both y'all boys, man. Appreciate it, bro. No, Appreciate good, it. Luck good, luck good luck to you. Good luck to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, that'll do it for us, the Bama Standard tonight. Until next week, roll tide. Roll, Roll tie to the JB, the Alabama JB team. Roll tie to the Alabama JP team.